demonstration of how I like to sharpen my everyday uh, firewood cutting type chain. Uh, there's really not a whole lot to it once you understand how the tooth works and some of the geometry. Uh, before I do anything, I normally go ahead and clean the tooth. Uh, I have these little scrubs. There's uh, one side's a little rough, the other side's uh, smooth, and there's a little detergent on it. Now you can use a different method if you want. Some use wire brush. Uh, some people actually soak the whole chain in uh, degreaser. I, I, I don't prefer to do that. But if that works for you, that's fine. Okay, the reason for cleaning the tooth is to uh, make sure you get all the oil and resin off the, off the tooth. Uh, that'll load your file and uh, even worse, it'll load your uh, grinding wheel up. Uh, if your grinding wheel gets loaded up with all that dirt and oil, it's going to over overheat the tooth. Uh, when you overheat the tooth, uh, it makes it brittle. And that also, when you make the metal brittle, it's going to crack. It's not going to hold an edge very long. It also makes it harder to sharpen later. It's almost impossible to use a file on a tooth that's been overheated. It just won't cut it. Now, let's look at uh, some of the geometry and uh, characteristics of the chain, kind of get an idea how the chain works here. Uh, this is your side plate. That's your working corner. The corner of the tooth does all the work. Okay, because of that, it's the first thing that bites the wood as well. And because of that, that's the first thing to go dull is that, that corner there. Okay, now you have your depth gauge. That needs to be lower than the top of your tooth here. Uh, I like 25 thou. I like the depth gauge to be lower than the top of the tooth by 25 thousandths of an inch. Now, occasionally you have to file that depth gauge down. Why? Because the tooth slopes downward. It has to. It's called relief. If it wasn't sloped downwards, if it wasn't sloped downwards, the whole top of that tooth would be uh, riding in the wood. That would create a lot of friction, a lot of extra drag you don't need. It's not doing anything either, just creating heat. So as you file the tooth, the tooth gets shorter. So you have to compensate by taking a little bit off the uh, depth gauge every now and then. Okay, now in here, this is called the gullet. This this area, this. Okay, when you file, you're only filing from here up. Okay, that's the size of the file. So you're not removing any of this material. When you file a couple times, you're going to have an excess buildup down here in the gullet. You have to remove that with a file, typically smaller than the one you use to sharpen the uh, actual tooth with. Uh, this improves cutting efficiently uh, greatly. Uh, this is a must if you want your chain to cut quickly and efficiently. Uh, what that does is it clogs this uh, gullet up and kind of uh, prevents the chips from clearing as easily. So you want to, every now and then, after a couple file filings or grindings, you want to remove the material in this area. This one's not too bad. Uh, I maintain my chain so I actually don't have one that has extra or excessive material in the gullet. I looked through all my chain, I have about 50, and I couldn't find one, so I'm, I'm on the ball there. Okay, this area here, the semicircle area, that's your hook. Uh, you don't want to get too low in the tooth. If you get too low in the tooth, you create an excessive hook. And what that does is make the metal behind the leading edge very thin, which makes it not last very long. It gets dull really quick, it just bends over. If you get too high, it just makes the tooth really blunt. It's just not going to cut anything. Uh, it would stay sharp for a while, but you're not going to be cutting efficiently. Uh, the angle of the tooth, the cutting edge on the top plate needs to be right around 60 degrees. The top plate angle, this angle here, I prefer 25 to 30 degree angle. Uh, the harder the wood, the less angle you want. You want a little more shallow, around 25 degrees. Uh, 25 is a good basic number, that's what I typically go with, but 30 would be fine as well. It's not, not that big of a difference. Now here's one tool I like to use. The reason I like to use this when hand filing isn't because I can't do it by hand, or freehand, should I say. Uh, this really helps to keep the right hook. It keeps the file from going too the file from going too low in the tooth or too high. It gives you that nice proper hook that'll give you a sharp edge, but one strong enough that it won't dull very quickly. Uh, this is just a, I, I think these go for like 
five or ten dollars. I'm not sure. It's been a while since I bought one. Uh, you can get them at steel dealers. Uh, Oregon makes one as well. They're pretty much the same thing, but these these little steel guides are, are the best. They're uh, they're put together the best. They have a nice clamping system here. The, the Oregon ones use like a little spring, and I'm I'm not too uh, thrilled with that design. You also have a little witness mark here that shows you that 30 degree angle. You this angle goes parallel with the bar as you're sharpening. I'll demonstrate that in a minute. This here is a very, very basic depth gauge tool. Now, Carlton makes the best tool on the market. They call it a file plate. I mean, that'll work with filing your tooth and lowering your depth gauges. But for the beginner, this is just much, much easier to use. This guide is uh, for 3 h chain. As you can see, it's even marked. Uh, I prefer to use the uh, 1364 files. Uh, seven like the, some like the 732nd, but I, I prefer the uh, 1364. It's just slightly smaller in diameter. Uh, it seems to cut a little bit quicker. It gets under the tooth a little bit easier. Okay, uh, I have the saw and a vise right now. Uh, when you sharpen like this with the saw and a vise or clamp to the bar, uh, you always want to make, make sure you go ahead and tighten the chain a little extra tighter than you normally would. Just prevents it from rocking at all or lifting up much. Just makes filing easier. Uh, now with the tooth, all the teeth clean, which they're not. I just cleaned this one for the demonstration. Now with the uh, file guide on the tooth, you can see how it aligns. You can see the witness mark there, at least I hope you can. And you uh, align that parallel with the bar. Now, some people like filing 90 degrees with the ground with the file pitched 90 degrees with the ground like that, I prefer to give a little upstroke, even on chains that don't require it or mention that uh, you should do that, uh, about five degrees upward. I find that produces a little sharper corner. Now the image quality is probably gonna be a little dark. I don't have the best setup here, but uh, I'll see how it turns out anyway. Uh, this is the clo uh, clean tooth, and I'm just gonna simply put the file on there. Uh, you can also use the chain brake, helps prevent the uh, tooth from moving much. And in a smooth, deliberate motion without that much force. You don't need much force against the tooth to really take off a lot of material. Just go forward like so. Again, smooth, easy forward strokes. Never drag the file backwards. That will doll file a file right away. Uh, these files last a long, long time if you just clean the teeth and file in one direction. And just a couple passes, that's all it takes. This was a doll tooth. And now it's nice and grippy. I could easily cut myself. And trust me, when you sharpen as much chain as I have, even with gloves, you're going to cut yourself eventually. <laughs> Uh, that is properly sharp. Uh, after you've sharpened the chain, uh, you can then go ahead and check your depth gauges. Checking the depth gauge is a very simple process. Simply lay this little gauge over the tooth. Okay, and this is uh, set for 25 thou clearance. So the tooth is going to be now, after I'm done filing the gauge down, uh, should be 25 thousandths higher than the top of that depth gauge. And to check it, you just simply take a straight edge or whatever you have handy <laughs> that's flat and run it over the depth gauge. You can hear it grab there a little bit. Let's go ahead and file that down. I have uh, several of these flat files around. They're uh, specifically for filing these depth gauges. And that's all it takes. Doesn't catch now. And when you file a lot off at one time, you can slightly round these uh, depth gauges, uh, the hump over again on these depth gauges, but that's really not necessary. They can be pretty much completely flat and they'll still cut relatively well. But uh, it'll be a little smoother if you round the top over a little bit. Probably hard to see with this camera. It's not the best camera, and lighting's not the greatest for camera work in here. Uh, but there's no reflection on the tooth edge. 
or the corner, the most important part. Uh, that's how you know it's properly sharp and obviously you can also feel it. Now I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate how you clean out the gullet. Uh, this chain really doesn't need the gullet cleaned out, but uh, I'll go ahead and file a little bit on it just, just for demonstration purposes. I'm using a smaller file than I used last time uh, to actually sharpen the tooth. This is a, uh, a 316 file. It's used for a .325 pitch chain. You can look down in here and usually when you file a lot of the tooth away there will be extra material. Simply remove it. Now you don't want to create another hook. You're just cleaning out what's in here and you actually want it to be vertical with the top of the, or in line with the corner of the tooth. You don't want to go too far back. That will kind of create too much hook as well. You just want that area cleaned out, this bottom area cleaned out, like so. Uh, that'll make the chain, that, that makes a big improvement in cutting efficiency. I personally think the most important thing is maintaining the proper hook. You can actually get your angles off and uh, it'll still cut relatively well, but if you have too much hook or not enough hook, chain's not going to cut worth the darn, it won't stay sharp long or it won't cut at all. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helps. It's, it's very simple stuff. Uh, nothing complicated. Very basic uh, way I sharpen my chains. And if you do what I did, and you keep up with the chain and don't let them get too dull, you'll be impressed with how the chain cuts, how the saw performs. It'll be less stress on the saw, less wear and tear on the saw and yourself. Uh, having the chain sharp like that is very important.